Apparently stuff comes from FedEx. It's all beat to death. Riot action so arrived as the evolution grand trunk. The first thing I noticed is the specs. Part of why I bought it is spec a 13 inch by 7 inch pack size. Well definitely this would compress to 13 inches but as far as whatever pack size I turn this every which way and get between 8 and 9 inches. Maybe if I tilt it a level down and stuff, you know, seven and seven eighths, but it isn't any seven by thirteen. Maybe you could get it there in a different bag. And its weight did check out good. Uh, Spec it at four pounds two ounces. Bounce between four pounds three and four ounces in its uh, stuff bag with the piece of cardboard and whatever else is in there. All right, action. Check it in with the Grand Trunk. Oh, where's the name of it again? It's a 20 Fahrenheit cocoon. Part of it to think of it, it's your sleeping bag and your bottom quilt or sleeping pad and your helmet all combined in one. So the fact that it's a decent sized package, which will pack smaller, is not alarming to me. All right. Grand trunk included with its cocoon, a you know a bigger bag to store it in, and the cocoon itself looks like some pretty high-end nylon so far, like this here jacket. All right, action! Back in with the Grand Trunk 20 Fahrenheit cocoon. Did include the clips. It's a so if, if you didn't look at the package, it almost looks black, but it's more of like a dark green looking color kind of a shade darker than that darkest army green at least it's looking like to me right now prize is some pretty high-end nylon uh, some trunk tech fabric on the hammock a blue inner it's called a storm color we'll see how this is all right a first look at the grand trunk cocoon style hammock here filled with 650 down it's got the sleeping bag integrated into it um I'm shaking it up a little because it is down. It's been packed in a box, you know. Might as well encourage the loft to get up. Just kind of feeling it out. Oh, yeah. It's like working out with them ropes at the gym. Don't get anybody. Get on. The zipper is nice. It's all in one. You don't have it, you know, kind of blowing around like that might. I've got that secured around the ridge line to that war bonnet there. But it's just the idea you could have everything all in one. You know, your, your bottom quilt. Your sleeping bag, just zip your gear in. You're going to be blowing halfway down to the Camaro shed. Alrighty. What's he up to? Well, I'll let you guys know what I'm up to. I'm weighing both the hammocks. This is a regular, what a lot of people use, a bottom quilt, a top quilt. Uh, some doodads to uh, fix things to stay warm. Uh, checks in at 4 pound 5 ounces, almost like that grand trunk that's all put together. Nonetheless, I'll put that in the same bag, the Grand Trunk. But this is a big thing, just how you get, you put everything away, but it comes out all kind of tangled up. Or you can separate everything, take the bottom quilt here off the green thing, take the camo hammock out, stuff it, stuff your sleeping bag or quilt somewhere else. But nonetheless, it's work. It's exactly what I mean, no matter how careful I am, you know, something falls out, some strings all tangled up, it's, you know, and my, I don't know, you almost have to take these apart completely and just put them back together every time you set them up at camp. All right, just stuffing the Grand Trunk 20 Fahrenheit cocoon into its bag here, into my Z-Packs bag to weigh it. There is a synthetic material available for this that I've seen as low as $179. This particular hammock was about $300 on sale. Um, and it's made a down and down typically compresses better uh, and as far as an outer layer staying dry under a tarp it works pretty well but you know that synthetic one looked pretty good I don't know why people bother to show their scale but that's what I'm using four pounds six ounces the Grand Trunk hammock four pounds five ounces the uh, war bonnet 11 footer with the hammock gear 40 Fahrenheit on bottom, REI 15 Fahrenheit magma quilt sleeping bag on top, couple pockets of doodads, a little bit lighter suspension pieces, ridge line though. Nonetheless, 
I feel like it's a pretty equal comparison for something rated at a bottom limit of 20 Fahrenheit. All right, action. Good old buddy Brooks checking in. Promise this won't be as boring as some videos, but uh, looking at a typical hammock setup, an 11 foot hammock with a uh, bottom quilt. And here, I like my nice uh, camo paint job on the tarp. Here, uh, this hammock gear bottom quilt came with some provisions to secure it. I really enjoy being able to do that so stuff just doesn't blow out of the hammock. Um, that said, I have some show and tell. Um, I just wanted to show first how this is. You get all these kind of cables and different things to, well, shot cords and strings and different things to adjust for your bottom quilt. You know, and sometimes the hammocks will also have uh, ways to connect the bottom quilt. There's some that are built a little more thought out. And this, however, stayed pretty nice, surprisingly, for the night. I didn't fight having to tug the underquilt around me. You can see I've got a 15 Fahrenheit REI Magma sleeping bag, a good 850 down with a hood on it. You could have a quilt or something. I just believe for, from my experience when it's winter here, I, I like zipping in and cutting out the drafts. Sometimes I'll use things on the ground. I definitely have quilts. A quilt is like a sleeping bag, but just doesn't have the zipper and everything and it's quite as much fabric. That said, I'm doing a little comparison here. I have bagged and weighed this sucker in that Dyneema bag. Five, seven ounce bag for the what they call the weight weenies but I stuffed it all in here and weighed it why did I do that that's because I'm doing something simple I have the grand trunk I'm trying to do things simple I designed some things and sent some things into some companies quite some time ago and this is a lot like I'd love to take credit for it. I gotta write the company a letter first sent it into all the cottage industries and a couple years later I sent them into places like Grand Trunk, well, maybe specifically Grand Trunk, because Grand Trunk, I had bought a cheap hammock called the Trunk Tech. I think this is a Trunk Tech. It's sewn in the insulation on it, and this is pretty nifty. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's gonna cost you 300 bucks for a down one like this, 180 for a synthetic one. This checks in at four pounds, and so does that, for lack of better words. I think it was four pounds, six ounces with the bag, the Z-Packs bag around it, and that was four pounds, five ounces, bagged all together. Granted, this doesn't have the ridge line across with the little bag and some other stuff, but that really adds up to nothing. Uh, and I've got some big hooks, I could lighten those up. There's a lot of weight weenies for my other audience out there who knows nothing about camping gear um, and just watches these entertaining videos, but yeah, this is it. I haven't hung in it. I've inspected the stitches, and I just wanted to give people a look at this item. Um, I felt obligated to kind of buy it because, like I said, I did send in some design work, and this looks an awful lot like it. I started my days working with, well, with uh, Steve Hazel, who sells uh, different quilts and hammock items on Etsy. And I started with the design, and I sent it to him, and sent one out to a couple other places, uh, like, throughout the years. And uh, eventually kind of started sending some, I'm not claiming credit for this or anything, but for all I know, it had nothing to do with me. But I like to make believe. It's the internet. It's a fantasy land. So you're just looking at the stitches. Uh, a lot of the hammock people like that some draw cords a zipper top and bottom no visible stuff pouch for anything but neither does that war bonnet down there um so i haven't found any mishaps but it's like that is a thing when you get everything all put together you don't want one stitch coming out and the hammock's useful this hammock was specced where I saw it 126 inches, which is a little over 10 feet. This isn't. This is a bigger hammock than that. The Trunk Tech, I think, is an 11-foot hammock. It's just a misprint. It was also specced at 5.2 pounds, and 
when I called Grand Trunk, they're like, no, no. I was like, is that your old model or what? It says 5.2 pounds and your website says 4.2 pounds. He's like, yeah, we got a lot of... Or I emailed them and the chief there said, yeah, we've got a... He's called the chief. So no offense to any chiefs out there, but he's like, uh, we got a lot of typos and stuff. And so this felt, this came from, uh, came from, came from Dick's Sporting Goods. And I didn't feel much risk going that way because I could always return it. I'm getting to the point where I'm a pretty upper level hammocker. So I'm pretty particular. It's rated at 20 Fahrenheit. It's called the Evolution. I like that name. Um, so there was one other hammock person on the websites that who uh, had this evolution. And he said it was similar stuff. He had a superior gear he was using a lot of time too. Uh, but he said this, he just said nothing bad about this hammock. I've seen some things say, yeah, I noticed some loose threads and Grand Trunk wouldn't help me because I bought it from them. And Grand Trunk explained that all to me. They're like, you have to go through a distributor like Dick's first. They, you know, make us uh, do that that way. And if you don't get anywhere there, then I feel like it's a good company. But we'll see. You know, at 4.4 4 pounds versus 4 pounds... What you get is here, everything's zipped up, you know. You throw your extra jacket or whatever you have in there and zip it up. It's not blowing halfway to Brother Rock's house up there in the woods and uh, or underneath my old truck. You know, here, if I didn't lash that quilt on there, and that's another thing. Well, let's first say, if I didn't lash those little hookups when I left, I had this sit out all night, well, that stuff could be scattered halfway to Paws Camaro. Uh, I could be under there fishing things out. But I did secure it. It's just a bit of extra work. You know, you kind of got to loop it over and hope the thing stays caught. You could come up with a better way. I'm just saying that this, with all the stuff flopping all over, compared to this, where all you do is just clip it on the suspension ropes and for any rookies just kind of this comes with no suspension ropes you just have to assume you have figured out some sort of contraption some use those slotted straps like this some use this is a x-ped slit line some use these whoopee slings where you draw a cord Getting into the nitty gritty with the Grand Trunk Evolution, and I have just noticed to me an issue. Um, and I'm sure the company would stand behind its product, but if you all can't see that, those stitches that connect the quilt bedding here, the uh. I'll bring you guys out so you can uh, see exactly what I mean. But first, I'll show you this. Um, these, I mean, you know, I'm a particular guy, but this is a stressed area because I'm also not that lightweight of a guy. I mean, I'm probably a solid 200 pounds. Uh, let me bring y'all out. Let me see this. I'm kind of upset about that because, you know, and I'm sure the company Grand Trunk would stand behind its product, Dick's Wood, whatever. I just noticed that maybe it's nothing. Maybe some people from my hammock groups could tell me more. But as a bigger guy, and no, get me wrong, this hammock might be rated for three. I'm just going to review a little bit. It's pretty awesome because, and I've sent some designs like this in. You know, loose threads like this, no big deal. You see that all the time. But uh, it's a hammock with all the your sleep system and integrated you know all you do is connect it to the tree and zip up as opposed to the uh, quilt system where you set up your hammock you know you take your bottom quilt and put that on or blow up your sleeping pad and put it in it whatever you do and then you have your sleeping bag then you know you don't want the wind getting underneath it especially when you leave it and blow it all over or even when you're sleeping in it if it's like down by the river where it's windy the wind can kind of get between your hammock and your quilt and 
pretty soon you're pretty cold. You're like, wow, well, I slept in the yard a lot of times in this and I was never cold. Now it's pretty windy down here by the river. But, uh, so this is really great from that aspect. I uh, see they don't completely utilize the whole hammock bed, but a lot of times that sits as slop. But boy, yeah, so this, uh, right here, when I sit in this hammock, or use it for on a day-to-day -day basis, these uh, stitch holes up here are gonna get a lot of strain. And maybe I'm overdoing them. I'll mail this into my hammock groups, you know. Uh, but I just see that is something that is going to want to... Uh, let me zoom back out. You can almost see it better. That's something that's going to want to pull apart as this hammock gets used. Especially for a, you know, an average to slightly heavier sized fellow like me. Evolution. It really is a nice evolution of hammock that you can zip right into. But... What I've been going over here is an issue with the stitching on a really high stressed area. It pretty much is pulling apart. And you can see on this side it's not. And you know, near as I can tell why that would be doing that. Um, this You know what's funny guys is I have not even tested this hammock. I am almost afraid to get into it because I feel like these stitches are almost pulling apart. I'm like do I, is this bigger opening than since I've been sitting here? Um, we're looking at the Grand Trunk evolution of loose stitches. Uh, but no, it's a, it is an evolution. I sent in some designs to this hammock. I had to push this design where you integrate the insulation. I've had several cottage places, several couple big companies you know I, I send drawings in post them on Facebook whenever the company puts the ad this is what you should be building but unfortunately yeah it's just a uh, a defect it's really hard probably for you all to see on the tape well there you go. that ain't hard to see right there is it um, that sucker's pulling apart and it's been out of its box yeah ye but what what's it been out of the box 20 minutes but <laughs> They probably could have done something a little different there, whatever the case is, or just not sewn into that channel, just have a cinch cord all the way around the hammock or whatever. You'd have to assume that it's done the, It's done a little differently here at the end because this is where your feet go. They're sealing off the draft, but oh, well, disappointments. All righty. Oh, yeah. Where is he? Checking in from the Grand Trunk Evolution. And uh, this hammock is a really nice lay. Uh, it's said on the specs 126 for its length. It's actually a trunk tech hammock, which was part of my inspiration to reach out to Grand Trunk. I tried a 1399 trunk tech and uh it was a very it's one of my most comfortable hammocks if i didn't go and tie some different things on the end of it myself it just left it like grand trunk did it probably opened my teeth there a little i had some coffee anyway coffee from the hammock uh but no this isn't going to be any coffee from the hammock in sector seven because this isn't going to make it to sector seven this is a beautiful hammock and they should have just doubled up this trunk tech uh, a beautiful design because yours truly has been designing these things. I can't sew things, but I can design them and send them to people. However, they just didn't know the secret that you can't really, I mean, you think this be common sense, you can't really sew into the hammock bed and expect it to hold any amount of weight. The stitches here have not pulled apart yet. And, and this is just as I got this hammock. Like, I have literally been laying in here like four or five minutes uh it is super cozy like my lay right now in here i have no pad to supplement it or anything it's very comfortable like my feet are down here on an angle um i'm zipped in about where i should be you could see if you're a bigger person than me there's still a good distance you could zip this 
I kind of like it this way, like these puffy, cuddly little pieces of the quilt, the draft tube and everything, and it's got full draft tubes. Down the zipper here, let me throw you some lights. Down the zipper here is a full draft tube going down. I can unzip it at the foot end to cool it. Um, shut this light off. But yeah, you know, there you have it. Those stitches, uh, if you can see that, you know, I'm sure you can. It doesn't take a lot of work. I'm just, dis people warn me of it like, you know, I had to see for myself. And I took no risk buying it from Dick's. Dick's Sporting Goods there in uh, mail order for, it's a $300 item, you know. Which, they're actually raising the price this year to three seventy nine. I spoke to Grant, or typed, texted to Grand Trunk on the internet, the emails, and, uh, you know, I got somebody on it. They seem real nice. Uh, like they bet, and I'm sure they back up the product. I just know inherently this is a design flaw. You have to have a doubled up hammock to do this. You can't just sew the something into the top hammock where your weight is. That's why other innovators have figured, or you have to do something different here at the head end, like, Grand Trunk's learn, and they have a, a really neat quilt system that's a cocoon. It isn't the hammock, too, you know. It's, it just goes around it, but you could do that at the head end here or something different. I don't know what, but uh, good shot. Good try. Um, just I know I can't, even if I knew for, if I knew right now this would, would hold me in the back country. you know, hey, if you're a family and you got a couple eight-year-old kids jumping up and down, no way. No way this lasts right here. But nonetheless, a look at the Grand Trunk. I know I overdo it a little with these videos, but um, it feels like it would hold to pretty cold. It's rated at 20. I feel like 27, 25 Fahrenheit would be no problem in this hammock. Um, and obviously you could add your sleeping bag or... Uh, put a hammock sock over it or like I use my pads sometimes my insulated pad but I do feel like I could hang here I think about hang here overnight try it down near a little below freezing but I don't know if this lasts I don't know I don't run this back get granny to drive me back to Dick's sooner or later you know get this sucker uh, switched out get my 300 bucks back anyway uh, over and out from good old buddy Brooks Alrighty, despite my cocoon grand trunk hammock having uh, stitching issues, I have been cozy. No wind blows in because you're all insulated and uh, you can see where the, the quilt comes down and is stitched to the bottom quilt. The top and bottom quilts are stitched together and the hammocks in between are very, very warm. Um, be great where it's windy and you're alongside the river or wherever you are and uh, no you know if you're in that you know, wind will get between the under quilt the under quilt's a headache to hang and i'm not calling it bad it's it's proven itself better every piece of gear on that thing is a beautifully constructed piece of gear that works and uh you get your hammock gear bottom quilt war bonnet hammock rei magma sleeping bag in there um, it all works nice uh and it doesn't have stuff like this if you can see that that is our issue of the day right there so people on the website warn me my groups are like yeah that you know they labeled it like, yeah don't buy that junk from blah 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 and i've had great success with the trunk tech hammock it's just a design flaw where yeah, where the quilt is sewn straight to the hammock and there's stress marks. Uh, I feel like somebody with weight has probably already been in this and found this. I feel like I couldn't answer. I'd love to know. I mean, because if I was a testing type of person testing the hammock, I certainly wouldn't send that out. Um, but more than likely, somebody bought this already, hung in it, saw that stitching, pulled and loose, and returned it. It came from Dick Sports, but... You know, I, I don't have a reason, I guess, to suspect. I mean, I've never hung in this, and this was like this, so I don't... Maybe some more experts on stitching could talk to me there. I see that as a big deal. Is there anybody... Let me ask you guys out there, my groups and stuff. Is there anybody who doesn't see that as a big deal? 
Like, oh no, I see that just pulling apart and working all the way up here and you got it, your head's hanging on the ground, banging on, <laughs> hanging and banging on the ground. <laughs> Man. All righty, action. This is for my superior gear, friends. Um, it's a fail of the Grand Trunk Evolution. Um, it definitely, to me, proves the concept of a cocoon hammock. I can take it away as a learning experience. If you don't push the envelope and test different designs, you don't really uh, gain perspective and innovation. And that said, uh, I was kind of afraid to, I mean, when you have a small cottage industry, they're very busy. You know, and I'm kind of a particular wordy guy. So this gave me a chance to really test... Uh, the cocoon concept uh, with little risk. I could just return it to Dick's Sports if it was no good. Um, but yeah, obviously the Grand Trunk's a fail here. This would never hold my weight for very long. Um, Will they just set up the hammock instead of having all different drafts blow under your underquilt? And <laughs> you all seen it. You're at a river and the hammock's blowing and the underquilt's about a foot away from it or and your stuff's blowing way up to the shed. Um, but uh, definitely, uh, I'll give you guys one more view of this. I'm not going I'm quite cozy in here. You know, it's not overly warm here in the, the Midwestern United States, Northern Illinois, I guess I'd call it. But you know, we're in January. Um, it's, it's, it could be 37 degrees Fahrenheit out right now. And I am, I had to unzip. I was so toasty. Um, I said I got my Duluth trading pants on and a down coat, but, um, I'm saying it's a good design. I, I like it. You know, you got that concept around where you can zip in. If you need to take your, your sleeping bag or extra quilt, or your hooded park and go into it when it's a little colder, you can, but you know, I don't know what to tell people on advice because I'm just kind of going through everything myself. But yeah, there's just a look at it. You know, it's it's pretty much what it looks like in the pictures. If you looked up the Grand Trunk Evolution, nice draft collar. It zips okay. Um, just stitching issues, major stitching issues there. All right, action. Lights, lights. Give me lights. Inside the, the Grand Trunk uh, evolution hammock and I already discovered some bad stitching um, but we're moving past that continuing with our test um, the draft tube comes up and I'm kind of kind of cinched in here whether in the middle or maybe at least these uh, draft ties if you could see I can't hardly see anything these draft ties shot cord system you could pull on it on this side so that when you're sleeping in here it isn't like dangling in your mouth basically the zipper and the shot cord ties all right action lights we got lights lights oh yeah i am in the grand trunk and my little uh, if you can see it it's a little if you can see it it's a little peephole i have here where the uh I don't know, the, uh, oh gosh, I keep turning it off. Come on, come on, give me the light. Where the uh, bottom quilt here, or the top quilt, just zips. There's a little, uh, oh, I gotta get it. I wish I could do it. So it's a little peephole. And uh, no frost built up on it. Um, I stayed very warm. I'm up early because I just slept you know like I mean I rested I'm on a diagonal you can see my feet there and my head here this is the Grand Trunk um, Evolution uh, it's a really nice warm kind of cocoon style sleeping bag style hammock um, I get out but I'm too comfortable um, comes with the, the bag. I did have some issues with the stitches. However, I stayed in it tonight. I'm going to test it. It's not like I was busting them out, but I had, there's the, it, it arrived with the stitches kind of strained along here. 
on this side, this side was sewn. And there's some debate as to whether that's, um, some experts said it's more like a sewing error, like they used too big of a needle or a bad needle and the wrong speed on the machine as to a design flaw. It wouldn't make sense that it'd be a design flaw because there's, I mean, it's a big company. I'm sure they, there's a synthetic version of this. I'm sure they pump quite a few of these out. It makes me think about REI, how they have that policy how you can get something for a year maybe i return this to dick's and dick's sporting goods and i love it so much get one off rei because i'm not afraid to get something off somewhere with like a return policy of a year even moose jaws got like a 60 day return policy just because i'd want to keep an eye on that area i'd want some confidence that that isn't going to tear a new one would not start Kind of straining like that. I can't. Say that, I mean, it makes me want to return my REI Magma. I got a REI. I don't want to say my old systems. I've got a Magma sleeping bag inside a hammock gear quilt, bottom quilt, and you know you got to do all the shock cord stuff and put it. If you don't know about hammocks, it's hard to understand what I'm talking about. But you know, even then, you know, the sleeping bag moves around and gets cold spots and stuff like that. Whereas here, you just take the hooks and clip them to the tree straps and you're done. you got a really nice toasty system that by all means you could use for a sleeping bag if you had to stay in a tent or something. Um, but uh, yeah, the Grand Trunk Evolution, it's a four pound system of down. That just give you your top and bottom insulation and your hammock all in one. So we're at probably about maybe a little under 32 Fahrenheit. I'm quite comfortable. I feel like if it got to like 25 or 23, I'd be starting to get a little cold. So I have to put a hammock sock or an extra pad in it or start thinking about doing something different. Um, superior gears out there with a really nice system. I saw crew ahead a cocoon system. I guess Dutch is coming out with maybe a zip on top thing. Simply Light can build some insulation into your hammock kind of like this. They don't have, you know, where everything zips together. The world is turning and the hammock companies are coming around. I sent in some designs over the last few years to different individual or companies and I'm glad that because some people just love those bottom quilts, putting them on and everything. I just love simplicity, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, action. Checking in from the uh, Grand Trunk Evolution. I thought I'd do another video on this before I took it down. I slept quite well. Uh, my head just kind of... Uh, I had this unzipped a little bit and my head just kind of tucked into a little nook. These were nice and soft against my face. Obviously, as a draft collar up and down, the, all the standards you'd see in a sleeping bag. Um, it was about 33 or so degrees Fahrenheit. So, first I was excited not to see frost. I thought it got a little below freezing, but I suppose if it froze up a bit, you'd get some frost on there very easy to hang uh, granted it doesn't come with these ropes you know this is just part of my suspension I kind of finagle for a ridge blob you know you come up with your own ridge but uh, you know you just take it out of the bag hook that in hook that in and there you are um, over here you got the main competition the bottom quilt with the top quilt or sleeping bag or whatever in there and first off, you're seeing I'm having to unsecure it because if I didn't have these provisions on the under quilt, things would just simply blow around. And then you gotta jerk it around. Okay, there we go. Beautiful under quilt. I'm very happy with it. I, I think there's some huge advantages here too. You know, you can change out your bottom quilt. You don't, you know, you're obviously stuck with one hammock here. You rip the thing, you're done or whatever. Um, I'm just a 
addressing the fact that I am more comfortable and this seems more thermally efficient and easier to set up, but I would argue that once you got all the sewing down and how much material, you, you can see they decided not to put material here or whatnot, this would be lighter weight. I don't know. I'm just debating, you know. These videos get long, I guess. But if this didn't have... <laughs> Like a lot of people, were, oh, I slept in that last night. Look at guys, check this out. This is the kicker here. A lot of people don't get it that cheap stitching, blah blah blah. They're right. Um, a few people commented, like, oh, you know, why would you buy that cheap junk? And they're proving me right. This is about testing a design. I can't, I'll do another video, but. I can't just go buying hammocks off Superior Gear or someplace like that not knowing what I can get or what I need. At least I don't think I can. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Here I can buy something with no risk, little risk, and if it sucks, like I find some broken stitches like that, I take it back to the sporting goods store. I'm not going to, like, buy... I mean, I don't think that... No, let's just pretend it didn't fit right. This isn't enough insulation. I need it. I feel bad just like not knowing what to buy. Like, I don't feel too guilty giving this a try because I don't have anything to lose. But I could piss somebody off. Oh, you know, why didn't you, you know, if you wanted a 20 degree underquilt, why didn't you just say so? Right, action. Little buddy Brooks checking in with the fast version video. This. You know, you have to string it up. Either all these items are in separate packages or they're all tangled together and you're trying to untwist them and figure out the cords. You have to secure it when you leave so it doesn't get blown around and the sleeping bag doesn't blow out. If you don't have a way to better secure it when it's windy out, you get the wind blowing underneath it and it looks like this. Um, the top quilt or sleeping bag like I have for a reason in the winter my top quilt I would find my rear hanging out of it when I sw switch to my side and having to adjust it back over my back or the bottom quilt is half of it's laying on the ground in the snow trust me I've got a zip in hooded uh, sleeping bag for a reason but then you can go into other things like you know you twist and turn and it's compressed against the edge of the hammock here or whatever and it's a cold spot or a lot of different things you know your hammock bottom quilt slips this way too far you gotta pull it up over your shoulder you decide you want to switch the other way around and it's not there or you go to this where you just simply hang it here and hang it here unzip it like a sleeping bag and get in and there are no places at all that the wind is going to blow in you can put your stuff in it and leave it you just zip it up and i felt like i feel like yeah there's more volume to heat but it's more i feel like this is a myth like there's less so in a mummy sleeping bag there's people make this out to be too big of a deal this air volume heating it it's way worse if you're like compressing the insulation on the side or half your top quilt is laying on the ground or your bottom quilt isn't covering right. I'm saying you're going to heat this up. I was 34 or so, 3 degrees. I was extremely comfortable in this. Granted, oh no, you know, you could have a thicker insulation version. I, I love the idea of a good American made product like well I can't think of too many maybe a superior gear but um, uh, and supporting a, a local person uh, uh, mentioned Dutch is getting a version that from jacks are better that zips around but I'm just saying that this from an idea of simplicity thermal efficiency weight you could go down the list besides maybe modular it's you obviously can't you know you're stuck if that's good to 35 degrees or 22 degrees that's what it is you know whereas you can put on a thicker quilt here but the quilt is almost the cost of the money you know um i don't know i'm just kind of opening the debate that there should be a lot more things designed hammocks designed like this compared to like this this 
everybody has their reasons, but there's like 50 designs like this, and there's like three designs like this. All right, action. This is to address a couple topics. Like Somebody saw this and they're like, hey, they're just copying Superior Gears design. Well, I'd argue that this is pretty different than Superior Gears design. I mean, sure, the design concept that you have everything integrated into one hammock makes sense. In fact, I think that there shouldn't be 50 companies making this less efficient ver version. Granted, everybody has a reason that more companies might switch to this because it's basically a more simple thermally efficient version you know i would argue that this contrasted with superior gear or any other thing out there is much more different than say if you took 50 companies that made these and laid them all out on the ground they would look very similar, like a rectangle, granted. This has a nice custom cut, little loop. From a perspective of simplicity, you pull it out of the bag, you hook one in here, and you hook one in there, and you unzip it and climb in. Then we don't even go down the road of like the fact that none of your stuff is blowing out. You don't have wind blowing underneath your underquilt, or you get up and leave your hammock and your stuff's blowing over there. Um, I'm just saying there's only a couple of these made by different companies and there are all kinds of these. Um, I just pr proposing the idea that I'm not calling it a dated system. I'm just wanting to without, I'm not trying to insult anybody. I'm just trying to force innovation to go as a, as a user of these products, I'm trying to force innovation to go the direction I I guess I want it all right this video goes out to Zach he said why don't you buy from superior gear you're buying a junk grand trunk well I didn't know it made junk first of all I have no reason like big Agnes makes a lot of tents are they junk I don't know but you know sure yeah this is the first thing I got I had no little experience with grand trunk I sent a lot of places some designs, and this is a company that has, whether they saw my design or thought it was me, or I don't really know, but I know that this is coming out somewhat like the design I sent. The design I sent actually had a foot box here and some other stuff different and blah, 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 but at least they're doing something. I like to think they listen to me. Uh, as a customer, I'm trying to force the very best design for hammocks throughout the industry. And um, I love Superior Gear Design. I've been, they're one of the first companies I found. I'm experimenting. I guess what I'm saying is I'm not ready to order a Superior Gear because I don't know what I want. And I'm gonna support a company that listens to me, I guess. I, I mean, there's no proof that Superior Gear, I'd like to think they have the best design, but why not give this company's design a try? I mean, where? how do I get I want to support anyone making the best designs. And that means this platform. I like this platform. It's been around a long time. But for me, this makes sense. Real simple. Um, anyway, I hope that helps. Are you talking the bottom quilt, the hammock, and the top quilt, or sleeping bag, or whatever you want to call it, all combined? You have all this down and material you're getting into the bag and uh, you know whereas if you just took that bottom quilt off and stuffed it in a little sack and then your sleeping bag and whatever I just saying it's kind of hard to stuff everything into the sack if that's what you could buy a different sack with a big wide mouth or whatever all right action got the grand trunk uh, evolution all stuffed in its bag and you know the idea is it specs it out at I think 13 by 7 I would say this is about 8 by 13 or maybe even a little bigger it's still probably pretty good considering you're stacking the under quilt the bottom quilt bottom comforter the hammock and the door the pad your sleeping bag or whatever like I said, it's probably about eight and a half by 13. Really, honestly, look at, 
it's no 13 by 7 and that's partly why I bought it. I saw that specification. Specs are off on this. It's